Hallelujah. Today is the fifth day that we are together. Today we commemorate the Good Friday. The Good Friday is the second day of Easter Tridom. When we commemorate the suffering, the crucifixion and the death of Jesus. Today is a day of mourning in the church. There are no decorations, no ornaments, the altar is bare, the tabernacle is left open and empty. And today the whole focus is on the cross of Calvary. Everything is centered around the cross. Now on Good Friday, specifically this Good Friday, most of us are confined to our homes. So how can we make this Good Friday very relevant to us or even more relevant to us? You know, in the readings, gospel reading of today, there is someone by name Simon of Cyrene. His name is mentioned in three of the gospels. He was a passerby who was in a way forced to carry the cross of Jesus. What a privilege. We sometimes envy Simon of Cyrene. But we need not envy Simon of Cyrene because we ourselves can share the cross of Jesus. We are all confined to our rooms, our houses. There is a lot of suffering around. There is a lot of anxiety. There is a lot of misery. You know, because we are confined to our homes, because we our near and dear ones are suffering. Some of us are personally suffering. Maybe our financial losses, our businesses are closed. There is financial constraint. There is anxiety of the coronavirus. Some of us are living in fear. Maybe some of us are in the hospital already. We are suffering from this virus. So how do we join Jesus today on Good Friday? That is what we are going to look at today. Luke chapter 9 verse 23 says, If any want to become my followers, let them deny themselves, take up their cross daily and follow me. That is one way of following Jesus, taking up our cross. Our cross, as on today, is the anxiety, the fear, the sufferings on account of many things, on account of being confined to our homes, having lost our business, having lost our money. So that's the suffering right now for us. So take up this cross and let us follow Jesus. Matthew chapter 10, 38 says, Whoever does not take up the cross and follow me is not worthy of me. So if you want to be worthy of Jesus, then we need to do this. Now, what is the cross that we can share? First of all, when we look at the cross, the question comes, why suffering? Even as we are passing through this difficult time, I know that there are questions in the minds of some of you. Why this? When sufferings come, the first thing that comes to our mind is, is the punishment. Because of sin, because of our sins, because of sins of somebody else, 
because of sins of our ancestors, because of what somebody else has done. Maybe COVID-19, we say some other nation has done something because of which we are suffering. And that is something that we need to correct first of all, that every time the sufferings come, it's not because of our evil doings, not because of our sins, or not because of somebody else. Look at the book of Job. Right in chapter 1, verse 1 of Job says, He was a blameless and upright man. And he offered sacrifices to God. And even he offered sacrifices for his children that they should remain blameless and even God acknowledges this and Satan attacks him saying it's because you have provided him all kinds of protection so Job was completely protected and he was a good man still sufferings came on his way so it's not always because of our sins. Hebrews chapter 12, 6 says, For the Lord disciplines those whom He loves. So if we are being disciplined today, I believe we are being disciplined. We are learning a lot of disciplines and the world is going to be very different after the end of this global pandemic. And the Lord disciplines those whom He loves and chastises every child whom He accepts. So if you are passing through this time of suffering, it is because the Lord loves us. You know, there is something beautiful. I want to share this example of Arthur Ashe. He was a Wimbledon player and he was affected by AIDS. He got it through the blood transfusion during his heart surgery in 1983 and many people many of his fans were sending him letters calling him up and one of them asked him this question why does God have to select you for such a bad disease me for such a bad disease why it's a beautiful answer that Arthur Ashe gave. He said, The world over 50 million children start playing tennis. Half a million actually learn to play tennis. 50,000 come to the circuit. 5,000 reach the Grand Slam. 50 reach Wimbledon. For the semi final, two to the finals. And when I was holding the World Cup, I never asked the Lord, why me? And today, when I am suffering, how can I ask God, why me? So let us remove this from our minds that the sufferings come to us because God does not love us. Let us remove this fear from within us. If you look at Jesus, you know, today we are reflecting this. Jesus, in the Garden of Gethsemane, he, he was sweating blood. You know, the sweat became drops of blood falling from his body and on the cross Jesus cried out father take away this cup from me looking at the cross Jesus prayed father take away this cup from me and finally on the cross Jesus says, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Now, did 
the Father loved Jesus? He loved Jesus all the more. He loved his son all the more. That is why he allowed him to suffer. And that is why Pope Francis tells us, in the midst of suffering, we should not look at the cross, but we should contemplate, meditate on God's love. That he loves us so much that we are able to share his suffering. St. Paul understood this in Colossians chapter 1 verse 24. He says, In my flesh I am filling up what is lacking in the afflictions of Christ on behalf of his body, the church. So, once we understand the mystery of suffering, both the fear and the apprehension goes away. It is no more the cross that is before us. It's Christ, the love of Christ that we experience. It was the experience of Saint Therese of Lisieux. She was 24 years old when she died. She was in the cloistered convent and she was suffering from tuberculosis. A lot of sufferings, fever, cough, weakness. Despite all this, she also had a difficult superior mother Gonzaga. She would be scolding her, shouting at her. All that became physical and mental suffering for her. So in the midst of all this, she was focusing on God's love. Because of this, she could make use of the sufferings and save souls. She became a missionary through her suffering. And today it's a call for you and me to be a missionary through this suffering that is coming to us through the COVID-19. There are various sufferings connected with this. I too am a part of this. You too are a part of this. I should have been traveling now. I'm confined to my home. There are a lot of anxieties. Yes, we offer it up. There is something beautiful that Mary Healy, Dr. Mary Healy, she's a professor of theology. In her book on healing, she gives an example of a friend of hers by name Robin Beck. And she says, this friend suffered from scoliosis, arthritis, osteoporosis, and several other painful conditions. And she would offer up her sufferings. She would she does not pray for healings for herself because she feels called to use her sufferings as weapons in her arsenal as she intercedes for grace and mercy for others. So she does not pray for herself in the midst of all these pains. She uses her pain to maximum effect. She says things like my knee has been sore all week. That is for you. My hip is for my cousin's daughter who is going through a divorce. She writes half jokingly. This is what she has written. One of the messages I have received from the Lord in the midst of my suffering is don't waste your pain. Translated, offer it up. A hospital stay, those who are in the hospitals, even if you are a nurse, you are a doctor, 
paramedical helping patients if you are in the hospital especially when surgery is involved it's a great time to plan on praying for everyone you know when the nurse walks in your room holding a hypo that is bigger than a knitting needle one would use for a hippopotamus pick a name from your prayer list and offer it up for them after the 90 90th time of being poked and when all your veins have collapsed you will be in such a state of grace you won't care that you have come to jab you with what they have come to jab you with if you stay focused on using the gift of pain for others your hospital stay will become a holy pilgrimage where you do the spirits bidding in the lives of others never doubt for one minute how much that will please the father so all of us our confinement here you know are being in this isolation in our homes it's a kind of a blessing that is what she says your hospital stay will become a holy pilgrimage so this stay can become a holy pilgrimage for all of us and then there's another question that i want to ask you is our god a sadistic god that he allows us suffering does he derive pleasure by seeing us suffering people who are all confined to our homes our rooms people who are in the hospitals in pain not able to breathe is he deriving pleasure by seeing the whole world suffering no psalm 56 nine and you know the the wordings could be different psalm 56 this edition is eight some editions are nine you have kept count of my tossings put my tears in your bottle are they not in your record something beautiful that says in our sufferings the lord is with us in our sufferings the lord is with us that he has he has put his our tears in his bottle means he has collected our tears and they are recorded in his book so he really cares for us god will wipe away every tear from their eyes revelations chapter 7 verse 17 So now this holy week this good friday we are going to fast we are going to do abstinence and maybe there is some kind of sacrifice that we are going to make let us offer this up now i just want to show you a video right now where people are praying kneeling on the streets it's a sacrifice they are making we too can do some sacrifice sitting at home on this good friday joining ourselves and like simon of cyrene sharing that cross that jesus is carrying let us watch this video Saint Catherine of Siena says, "My soul is jubilantly happy in this grief, in the suffering, because among the thorns, 
We are all having thorns around. The coronavirus, the COVID-19. Among the thorns, I smell the fragrance of a rose about to be opened. Please close our eyes. Heavenly Father, Heavenly Father, as we join ourselves today with your Son in his suffering, in his crucifixion, in his death, give us the grace to offer ourselves, offer our sufferings, our anxieties, our sufferings, and unite it with Jesus on the cross. Like the Simon of Cyrene, let us share the cross of your Son. Let us partake in the mission of salvation. Lord, give us the grace to accept this time of hardship, of suffering, with the eyes of faith. Accept it, not to complain about it and not to find fault with anyone. Let me have the right understanding of this mystery that I may be able to be a man of, a man, a woman of hope that like St. Catherine of Siena, I'm able to smell the fragrance of the rose in the midst of all the thorns that are around me. I just want to surrender my fear, my anxiety, my pain, my hardships and sufferings and unite it with Jesus on the cross. Amen. Mother Mary, you stood at the foot of the cross. You understood the meaning of what your son was doing and undergoing. Please pray for me that I too may understand. I too may cooperate with the plan of the Father. Amen.